We are live on YouTube. We were doing a little pre-show on Instagram. I saw Charles drinking caveman, uh, one half of Whiskey Untitled, who's teamed up with Wally from Scotch and Sniff. That's a whole mouthful. You know, you got Charles drinking caveman, who's joined Wally Sniff <laughs> of Scotch and Sniff on their own channel, Whiskey Untitled. Yeah. Anyway, they were they were live the other night, and I saw Charles went live on Instagram first. So I went live. I got my phone over here. We were talking to some people on Instagram, and uh, thanks Charles for that idea. I like that. That's kind of neat. And we're also broadcasting on Instagram. If you're not able to join us on YouTube, I guess I should look over here when I say that. You've got sure. us there. Well, Don's on. We got Don Sutcliffe in. Oh, good. So, uh, kind of a. Well, we got a few things to talk about. We'll talk about the October October event. We've got um, Bart's drinking some Irish whiskey. That's right. I got a little Jameson's, uh, the uh, Caskmate Stout Edition, and I'm going to end with a little Black Barrel. I've been sampling that in these hot summer months. Hot. But this week, we also will go back and look at uh, the Crown Royal Bourbon Mash, also known as the Blender's Mash. Yeah. And we also did Compass Box Bennies uh, from Chicago, Illinois. A limited run of 800 and some bottles, wasn't it? Yeah, and that one uh, has, have you tried it again since we uh, filmed? No, uh-uh. Because it, it uh, at first blush, at first open, I was disappointed. And then a few days later, we, uh, we were reviewing it, and it had already begun to open and change a little bit. Yeah, I think so, too. It was a little stuffy when we first opened it. And, uh yep. Uh, it was still good. It, it, it didn't come off as, as really good, but then that was just right when I cracked the seal and opened sure. it. And then, uh, yeah, within a couple of weeks, so it really kind of did not necessarily did a 180, but no, it just uh, it definitely improved a little bit. Uh, also, well, what are we going to do, Bart, with all this stuff? We're going to test it live style. I'm looking on Instagram over here. Christina is going to kick somebody's butt next Saturday. I want to make that live on Instagram, Christina. I also got my little trooper glass. Scotch trooper. Oh. Mm. Now I showed uh, Instagram first. I'm actually, I opened up, this was a Weller I found here at our store, Special Reserve, but it's got one of those little gold stickers on it that denotes it as a single barrel uh, Weller for the state of Kansas. Okay. Uh, and it was three dollars. It was three dollars higher than the standard uh, Weller. Weller here is eighteen dollars. This was twenty-one, which I thought was reasonable. I thought I can try it for that. I have been looking, Claire, for the uh, Weller CYBP. A barrel proof? But it's not barrel proof. I think it's what still forty-five it? or forty-six percent. Well, it's a uh, craft your. Actually, it's CYPB, craft your perfect bourbon. Hmm. They did a, uh, Weller did a uh, fan, kind of a crowdsourcing type deal. They did a survey, asked everybody what their what their favorite mash bill was, what the favorite age was, what their favorite blah, er, er, wood, and I don't yeah. know, all kinds of stuff, where to store it in the warehouse. Your so they took, the, they took the results of the survey and created CYPB. Wow. From their favorite wood. And unfortunately, it's a. I think it retails forty five or fifty dollars on it, and it's already going for three hundred and fifty dollars plus on the secondary market. That's please. crazy, people! Come on, please, please, please. Uh, first, let's get into a little something I showed you over here off to the side. We this year, Jonathan at Secret Spirits contacted us. Good timing, I thought, because a couple of years ago I saw these. Mm -hmm. They were not available in the states. There, it's a. They're in Canada, and I was really interested in these, and I wanted to get one. And then uh, last year, Scotch Trooper uh, helped Secret Spirits really kind of push the fourth edition, which is what this one is. Uh, Jonathan at Secret Spirits had contacted us and asked if we'd like to be involved in, with the fifth edition for this year. We said sure. So they sent us this one to kind of tease before the uh, fifth edition comes out this year. And I, I got to tell you, I'm really impressed with it so far. We haven't got into any of the bottles. We'll do some individual reviews, I think, just real quick. Well, these are supposed to be 
This is one through 25 for December 1st through December 25th. And each day you pull one out and you drink it and you enjoy it. Right. So, and actually I talked to Jonathan about coming on and doing a live show with us mm -hmm. and uh, talking a little bit more about him, which he's, he's uh, wanting to do as well. She should. It looks like you were already hoping it was the first of December. Looks like yeah. you, were, you were poking. Well, I pulled one out to see. Now I'll tell you what surprised me with this too. It's, a, it's like an advent calendar. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. But if I can get my fingers in there and get the bottle out. Goodness. December 1st. Come on now. It's stuck. Oh, there we go. There you go. These are uh, they're 50 milliliter samples. So it's a pretty, it's almost two pours because 30 milliliters is an ounce. Mm. So now this one is a Tamdu, an 18 year old from last year. Wow. Um, and I'm looking for the, I believe they keep, these are like single casks and stuff that they do. Most of them, I believe all, or this one's 50%. There it is. Most of them are uh, higher ABVs or single cask. They try to, and he's got, Jonathan's got kind of a rhyme and a reason to the way he lays these out in the order that he does. I bet. Now, real quick, yeah. there's a Mike Snook or Snook says, so glad I purchased a set of your coins. I really enjoy using them when trying a new bourbon for the first time. And this is why I like this. You guys are truly the Scotch gods. Hello. <laughs> I had to get that in there. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, but uh, stay tuned. We'll do more. We'll do some more postings and stuff. We'll take a little bit more, do a separate video, just an in-depth look at last year's. I, t I told Bart, too, this thing weighs about probably t at least 20. I said 40 pounds, which is it, which is it's, it does not weigh that much. But well, you're smaller. This did show up in a box. Um, they will be available in most of the states this year. If you're interested, we'll get more details, more information on that. But I'm looking forward to it. People are liking your ECBP on the bottom shelf. I better turn my camera back. There we go. Hello. Like the look. They like the look. I've got, um, I don't know if they can see them down there on the yeah. floor. There's a few on the floor down there. Mm -hmm. If you look that's, right down there. It's on the floor that's floor. what they were seeing. They were oh, seeing okay. the down there area when you had it all panned over. <laughs> that down there that's what they were seeing baby uh, another use for the dummy coins if you put ice in your bourbon you can use it as a whiskey coaster sure does that well too speaking of that have they come in yet I've been uh, anticipating I know the order has been put in the coins is that, I'm sorry was that huh well, I'm wondering, cask four, we've locked in the design. Yeah. And uh, since we sent in the art, they didn't send us a proof. Usually they send us a proof, uh, which was fine. They didn't this time. Uh, and then usually we kind of tease the proof. Well, they just got the coins printed up and shipped them. They shipped on Friday. They're supposed to be here Wednesday. So, Hello. Yeah. We'll probably wait till next weekend, Get the uh, once we get the coins in hand, show them. And then we'll let you uh, pre-order your, or you know, it's not even really a pre-order at that point. It'll be a, an order of the same. If you've got cask three, one, one through 500, you'll be able to order the same number in cask four. Right. What if you've got cask one and you want the same number? We, we have to go by the last edition, the last cask that ran. That way, if you had cask one but didn't order two or three, you forfeited your right to to the number. Someone else got it. You got you got trumped. Not going political. <laughs> yeah, you can't play any kind of card games now where there's a Trump. People are like, what? We ain't believing no Trump around here. <laughs> Oh, I grew up in my family. First game I ever played, my dad was with my grandparents' house in Iowa, and we'd be playing hearts and spades. And and uh, we had to play a game called Oh, to, oh Heck, which is actually called Oh Hell, but you couldn't curse in grandma and grandpa's house. That's a true story. And you want to see some card playing, man, go in the Army. 
What do you want to talk about? You want to talk about Crown Royal first? You want to talk about Compass Box first, Barto? All right, let's bring up Crown Royal. So. Now, I messed around today. I should have got you some samples of these because you don't have either one of these bottles there. I should have just run you no, over some. No, I don't need those. So we've we've sampled them. I know what they taste like. You know, the the uh, their uh, blender's mash or bourbon's mash, it was okay. Um I, I think where it hits the hot, the, the neat, the sweet spot is folks that usually just drink whiskey and cocktails. Cause I told you during the show and anybody that's seen it, I'd had two different people that know that we do at the office and they came up and said, you got to try this uh, bourbon mash, this crown Royal bourbon mash. Now they were a little confused too. I think they thought it was more of a bourbon, but they liked it. I think because crown is a little bit lighter. You know, it's a little bit easier to to sip neat. So I think they really hit there. I don't care if they call it blender's mash, bourbon mash. Um, it was at least resonating with a few people at the office that normally wouldn't even try whiskey straight. Send a little reply on Instagram here. So what do you think? I mean, the, the flavor was okay. I'll be honest with you. We're, we've been doing this long enough. You know, I'm a little bit, not in any kind of snooty way, but I kind of know what I like and I know what I don't. I didn't dislike it, but it's not something I would go to with what we have on our shelves. We both have pretty good shelves of whiskey now. Um, the only thing I'd do if I was having like all the neighbors over and they were like, we want to try some of your whiskey, I may go so lay some of that in and then go try this. <laughs> Well, it, when this came out, Crown Royal got into some trouble because they labeled it bourbon mash. Um, and then in the States, people were putting it in the same aisles, the same shelves with their bourbon. People thought it was a bourbon. It's not a bourbon. Right. Which is what I did when I first bought it. I thought I saw it in the store as a first I'd seen of it. And I saw Crown Royal bourbon mash. I picked it up. I ran home. I tried it. And I thought, oh, this is terrible. Mm. This, isn't, this isn't bourbon. What, a, what the hell is this stuff? It's like a sweet. Canadian rye whiskey, which is exactly what it is. Now, once you get past the bourbon, the, the naming bourbon, and you get that out of your head, it's actually, I don't think it's that bad. I, I like it. I think it's sweet. It's a nice, to me, strong, sweet rye. And you should try it next to the uh, Northern Harvest rye, probably, to see how it does. Ooh, Northern Harvest rye, I'll kill it. So the cabinet behind me, I'd like to say that's something neat, like a dartboard back in there or something. That is just a very nice way to hide my two electrical panels. <laughs> so that's all that is. Those are electrical panel hiders. Now I will tell you, I noticed running around the other day doing some whiskey shopping, the blend, the, the renamed repackaged stuff with blenders mash on it is in our area now as well. Wow. Bourbon mash and then the blenders mash now. Wow. I wonder what that cost them to retool, relabel. I mean, probably not much, but it couldn't no, have been. Cheap. Yeah, I don't. Well, I don't think the thing is they were able to sell what they didn't have to recall stuff and relabel sure. it. They just did a sticker. And, yeah, they, they could sell what they had, what people had in stock. Right. So now, but, and people ask, is that going to be a collector's item? Now, this is twenty two dollars. I think twenty four dollars in our area. You can buy this and save it for twenty years, and you'll <laughs> be able to sell it for twenty five or twenty six dollars probably. <laughs> so. Uh, what is it? The Cornerstone series? Mm-hmm. Yeah, now there they did a very similar thing. You've got that over there, and it was it was uh, very, very good. And I think that's where it's going That's a 13-year. Now, this other one's pretty young. I'm going to put this, only put this other one at like a... Two six, years. Six years. Yeah, at the most, six. Okay, you thought six? Well, hey, I'd say five to six years somewhere. And uh, Whiskey Throttle is tuning in. He's got a pretty good ear on the Canadian market. He might know uh, the age on the actual bourbon mash. Now, this is the uh, the Crown Royal, the Noble Collection. This was a 13-year one that they put out. Quite a bit different. And reasonable. This was $55, I think, in our area. And it still is. Right. Very good. Very, very good. Had a little bit more. So was it a, it's a little higher ABV, if I remember right, too, isn't it? Uh, 
no, 40. Well, for a crown, most of them being 40%. This one, the 13 year is 45%. Okay. I was thinking it was more. Well, that's about right. I was thinking it was 46. Yeah. See, the bourbon mash is only 40. Sure. Pretty standard. And I don't think I have a regular bottle of Crown Royal here to look at, but I'm, I know it's 40% as well. Um, Daniel says Jeremy H. would have a better get, guess at, his, at the age on the Crown Royal than he would. So Jeremy H. is Rob, Whiskey in the Sixes, buddy. Uh, been on a few shows with him, and I believe he started a YouTube show as well now. Really? Does he have a beard? No. Wow. Oh, he needs to grow a mustache and he needs to wax it and curl it and make it fancy. <laughs> That's just my tip. <laughs> Get the bees wax out, go all 1925 with it. You know, I think I think the bourbon mash is gonna give the, the northern harvest rye a run for its money. I know you're hung up on that northern harvest rye, but I am. We called it before the big man put it in his Bible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't piss somebody off. Murray. Murray. Oh, Jeremy's uh, channel's coming out next week. He must be getting ready to go with it. Got it. Uh, oh, hey, there we go. Uh, no, uh, Whiskey Throttle says nobody wears tighter shirts than Rob does. Wow. That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Northern Harvest Rye, you know, I bought I bought a case of it. And I still have half that case left. I love it. So um, I think it's very, very flavorful. Really, the bourbon mash has a lot of flavor to it as well. We'll do that. We'll have to, maybe that's another impromptu. We'll look at uh, Northern Harvest Rye next to the bourbon mash. Ooh, that might be a good versus. Just do head to head. Those yeah. Two. Crown that against is crown. Is Northern Harvest Dry, though, is it still on the market? Are they still making it? Or was that a, uh, or, I mean, there was a lot of it, but I don't know that I've seen that much of it lately. Did it? Well, you did could they quit right. Well, I haven't seen it lately. They made a oh. ton of it, though, and I would bet they made even more of it once it was named Whiskey of the Year. Um, but you're right. I, you know, I don't really look over there because I know I got a bunch of it. Um, but I was wondering. Yeah. Okay. They're saying, uh, yeah. Uh, shelf two is saying, yeah, he has not seen it on the shelves. Yeah. Recently. Matt, Matt Bailey hasn't seen it. Richie Z has seen it. Ooh, well, now it makes me think it might be going out. I need to go buy some more. I know it's not as plentiful as it was. That's what made me start thinking if it had been discontinued or I hate to use limited run because there was a lot of it, but I don't know if it was just a one-time push out maybe for him. Would that be the right term? A push out? <laughs> push out? <laughs> I don't know. Don Nasheed is in here. Don, I want to say thank you. You sent a care package. And uh, just this Saturday, my wife made some pineapple coconut pancakes from the uh, mix that you sent in your care package. So thank you. He's uh, having some long branch over ice. Beamer72 oh. Addiction on Instagram wants to know if you're wearing a manga shirt. He is wearing a manga sh shirt, of course. This is the original. This is what I call the Eye of Sauron manga <laughs> shirt. <laughs> and, and, uh, and with a Japanese samurai headed toward, apparently, Sauron. So, uh, Food Quig is noting, and then Harry Wally Mossy as well on Instagram, that... Uh, the Northern Harvest Rye is still widely available here in Ontario, at least, says Harry. And Food Quig is out west in a western Canada. Huh. Well, the sniper says, and I, I would agree with him. I think this has crossed my mind. Whenever he hears bourbon mash, he starts thinking it's October with the monster mash. So I think that happens to me, too. There you go. And DH, DH Silv, too, he, he notes that it wouldn't be to say that they pushed it out once. He says the correct way would be to say they made it one time. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Cocktail Maven says, do the mash. Do the bourbon mash. Um, I like that. I'm going to say they pushed this out. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Oh boy. Yeah. And we still got 10 people watching on Instagram as well. So our numbers are going, I mean, we got uh, 66 watching us on YouTube, 10 on Instagram. Beautiful. <laughs> they just tuned in to hear you say they pushed it out. <laughs> oh, tonight's poison is in says hi guys hello oh my oh my oh my oh well tonight's poison was really the main one on instagram he had contacted us well i'm assuming he i think it's he but uh when when scotch troopers after we had Scotch Trooper on the 12 Hours of Boom, a couple of weekends later, uh, Tonight's Poison had started kind of the, the Instagram social media push to support Scotch Trooper. Cool. So, good to have you watching on YouTube. Very good. Lochness just tuning in. Tom R., Santa Cruzin'. We got a lot of people tuning in. Richie V., Shimon, Scotch Society. Now we're going to be filming tomorrow morning. So let me turn my email sound off. That just reminded me that was a, I did not do that on my checklist. Turn yeah. mine off as well. I should have done that too. I hate when the ding ding. So the Crown Royal Bourbon Mash. Oh, if you uh, if this is twenty four or twenty five dollars in your area, I think it's worth it. I, I, I don't think it's that bad at all. Yeah, you, uh, so you'll probably find blenders mash now, which is what they had to rename it to. But you were getting Northern Harvest Rye for seventeen ninety nine, and it's better. Yeah, you're you're saying that. And Murray. <laughs> well, <laughs> the Bible hasn't come out yet this year. No, but it did back in what was. There probably be a lot of people calling shenanigans though. If he calls the Crown Royal Bourbon Mash the whiskey of the year this year. Well, they he, they should call shenanigans if he did that. People called shenanigans on the Northern Harvest Rye, but it was very, very flavorful, and it under-promised, over-delivered. You hear me say that a lot. Um, but the longer I've been doing this, the more that's something that makes me pay attention is when I come in and my expectations get get flipped. They get They just get tossed on their head. So when they get pushed out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah something like that i like my whiskey to make uh, movements transitions when sipping neat and i love when something under promises and over delivers love it uh, for those that tuned in late we showed towards the beginning of the show uh the secret spirits advent calendar uh they asked us to uh, kind of help uh, advertise for them a little bit this year, push out some information. This is last year's advent calendar, the fourth edition. This year we'll be getting the fifth edition. We'll do a lot of uh, social media push with it and uh, look for more there. I think it would almost be nice if we could do our own little, little live film. That sounds painful though, because that means every day we're linking up. Right. Well, I think we were, I think we're going to break it down. Maybe <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll split it. I mean, you know, in either lives or pre recorded we'll do something. Yeah. We'll knock out little end of it, just three to five minute deals. I think maybe. You're right. Maybe I don't want to do some pre recorded and maybe on the weekends we do lives with them. Maybe you know? but see, I don't want to do pre recorded because that means the excitement of opening it up on the day that you open, it's gone. Cause here's, here's the deal. My mom, I don't know where she got them. Heck, maybe she made them, but she had little advent mm -hmm. calendars kind of. It was just a long strip that had those little yarn ties on it. And she tied candy, cinnamon candies, you know, those red cinnamon candies on there? Yeah. yeah. They were tied on there, and it was nothing. This cost her nothing, a bag of candy. And, you know, every day you could go untie one of those, and boom, the new day, you know, bam. And you can even see what they were. That's what's so neat is, is the hiddenness of this. Um, you know that I'm I'm going to uh, know there's not a poop theme going on, first of all. We even got Tom R. throwing a poop emoji in there. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, yeah, but I will say that that whole design, there's even a, uh, there was a guy um, named Rob Davio that used to work for Hasbro that went out and opened his own company. He created a gaming 
board gaming system that has a similar deal to Advents, where you open secret areas and get surprised by the game morphing or changing. It's called Legacy, and it and it just there's something about opening a secret compartment and not knowing what's in. Inside. Yeah, yeah. All right. And I didn't know if you'd be up for that or not. I think it'd be if we did them live, though. The only problem is with our work schedule, most of them aren't going to happen till eight or nine o'clock at night. Totally. So I, I doubt we're going to light them up in the morning. The only thing I was thinking, we could light some up in the morning. We could, you know, I'd drive over to your place before I head to the office. And uh, I don't know, bef before I put the suit on, boom. And uh, maybe we just open it. We don't sample it, but we open it. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. It looks like Claire's getting needs a diaper. <laughs> <laughs> he had an accident. <laughs> Yeah, Claire had a little accident. Uh, Harry Wally Mossy is asking on Instagram where Bart's at. Bart is at his house. He's remoting, what we call remoting in. Right. So sometimes he's able to make it over. Sometimes the Puerto Rican wife. Yeah, well, the family. We were watching Thanos tonight. Tonight was the big uh, Thanos Avengers movie. Infinity uh, we War. Usually, yep, Infinity War. We usually do it Mondays, but uh, tomorrow is Open House, which has my 11-year-old Bo pissed off. He does not want to go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> I am very worried at this point in time that by the time he's 19, he's going to want to be playing Fortnite or whatever, Fortnite 5 in his room and smoking a bowl. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> Hopefully we can get rid of the smoke in the bowl part, but yeah, but he loves relaxing and playing his video games and board games, but he does not want to go back to school. Uh, for those watching Instagram and YouTube compass box, Benny's gold standard. We just uh, released this yesterday or review of this. Bart does not have a sample. I should have got him on today. I didn't. No, 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 no. You don't need to do that. Now the mash and drum just said fork knife. Well, I'm saying Fortnite. However, when you said fork knife, it made me immediately think of a spork. I don't know why. Oh, cowbell. Sniper's in the house. Whoa, double cowbell. Whoa, I think he did that mm, accidentally. Yeah. Twice. Accidentally. <laughs> A little cowbell for those on Instagram. When we get a super chat on YouTube, we give some. We need more cowbell, basically. I think the sniper's been drinking that, or he double tapped us. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Moose says that's a double. Yeah, that's a double tap. The sniper just double tapped us, man. Uh, well, uh, Beamer seventy two addictions asking if there's a Mictors on the on the top shoulder or over my right shoulder. On the top shelf, is there a Mictors? If you're looking, no, there's no Mictors up here. Really, I've got uh, Mictors 10-year bourbon. I've got the toasted barrel or the toasted, yeah, the rye, the tent, the rye toasted barrel finish. There you go. Hey, and, I'm with you. The rye barrel proof. I'm with Bird Dog and oddly, or not oddly, but coolly, my boy uh, wants to be a teacher. He's 11, and he decided when he was, I think, well, he loved his kindergarten teacher. And when he was about seven or eight, he told me, dad, I want to be a teacher. I know I got to go to college and I'm going to do it. And I was like, great, do it. So yeah, I, I think he's driven. He just, he actually has his own uh, YouTube channel. Did I tell you that Bruno? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you said he started it. Yep. He's uh, he's doing uh, Nintendo 3DS. If you guys you, you you won't enjoy it. It's uh, him playing his 3DS, but he talks nonstop like I do. And he talks about his show. If you want to thrill him, go look up uh, Bo Fox 7 is his YouTube channel. So, <laughs> so I think he's got four How's subscribers. How's he spelling Bo Fox? Oh, yeah. B-E-A-U-F-O-X 7. Biau. Biau Fox. Biau Fox. And then the numeral 7. Yeah, that would uh, – oh, Malted's in. It was just oh. funny. I'll give the cowbell pause. He came to me and said, uh, I'd like to do a channel. And he had all these highfalutin ideas about screen capture, and he was speaking Greek. And I go, do you know how to screen capture a 3DS? Because I don't. And he had all these plans, and, and I said, I'd say you just get started before you start – buying $300 machines and stuff. And he finally came to me and said, you're right, let's just get started. So we're kind of, it's like a garage band he's doing. It's not the prettiest thing, but he's getting going. A few people pointing out, including Claire, 
Uh, Richie's, uh, well, Claire says toasted rye is the best one of the Mictors. Uh, Richie Z says it's amazing, but it's unavailable now. I think yeah. it's, I think it's, a. I mean, I think they I, do it annually. I love the toasted rye. That, that was a very good one. Yes. It's, it's, I mean, their other rye, their, their single barrel, which is hard to find a little more pricey. They tasted comparable, but that toasted rye, uh, was great. I actually didn't think it was going to be extra special and it was. Well, it's the, the, so the toasted rye is literally is the barrel strength Michter's rye and then finished a little bit longer in a toasted barrel. Got it. So it, so actually, it, is good. it actually smooths it out and uh, just brings down a little bit. The, the, the barrel proof or the barrel strength rise just has a little bit more punch flavor wise, I think, but the toasted barrel really that, that extra finishing in that toasted barrel really helps kind of smooth it out. It is higher prices, but and what's harder is they're they're hard to find. Yeah, we just don't see them coming around too much. What no manga shirt in the office? Hold on, somebody isn't seeing. I'm up too tight. Look at that manga, baby. Manga, the mash. And drum. Jason C over at the mash and drum. He just started up a YouTube channel. He actually does pretty good reviews. Go check out the mash and drum, but. Uh, Super chat came in. Great live stream, fellas. I have a fever, and the only cure is more cowbell. <laughs> I got a fever. Uh, Whiskey Obsessed likes the 10-year uh, Michter's Rye as his favorite. I've had a sample of that. I might have been from Claire, even. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't enough to really judge on, but it was pretty good. Now, see, I'll tell you, I've got one bottle of the barrel strength. Well, I had one bottle of the barrel strength and one bottle of the toasted barrel finish, both from Auburn, and I've never seen any others. Right. And my nephew in, was in traveling through Nebraska. He found me another bottle of the barrel strength rye, uh, maybe in November or December, that time frame. That's the only other one I've ever seen. It doesn't, even, it, it, it doesn't even make it to the shelves around here. Well, did you leave the toasted one over here, or do you have it? No, I've got them both. Oh, okay. Those, those are mine, dude. What are you talking about? I figured maybe you left it as a kind gesture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right next to that uh, Lot 40 cast strength. What, what? That was a nice gesture, too. That disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have a lot of that. <laughs> I figured you'd probably already poured half out into like a different bottle you had or something. Uh, well, I did Instagram out a picture. Uh, my nephew, he, he moved up to uh, South Dakota and well, he's working in South Dakota, actually bought a house uh, just across the border in Minnesota. He found some Glendronic 15 revivals for me, mm. but on the shelf next to him was a Scapa 16, which I didn't really, I, I, I'd never even seen anything about it. But as soon as I posted the picture on Instagram, I had a bunch of people telling me I should have bought the, had him pick up the Scapa as well. Wow. So I did uh, email him or not email him. I messaged him back. I said, Hey, give me that Scapa the next time you're in there. So it if it's been there this long, it should still be there. Should. And there's more bottles of the Glendronic 15 up there in that area as well. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Now, see, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, probably the most interesting thing that I've noticed about you and I this year, and I'll talk more about this once we hit January 2019, is I feel like we've diverged a little bit. You're like a, you're like a semi-pro on this one, that one, the SCAPA, oh, the SCAPA 16, the da -da -da -da. you know, SCAPA, I know you didn't know that one, but if, if you were finding something, of course, I know the toasted and but your detail and your memory recall, well, it's always been better than mine anyway. <laughs> You're like dialed in. I mean, you, you can remember, oh, yeah, we had that bottle. We tried that bottle back in September 16. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? I've never even seen it. You're like, no, you, you gave it like an 89. I'm like, what the hell? And you're dialed in on these different bottles and the subsets of the ECBPs and how many and which one and where. And I'm, I'm just not following it as close as you are there. Tonight's poison, baby. 
check out and let me know constructive criticism on, on his YouTube channel. I didn't know uh, tonight's poison. I didn't know you had one. I don't think, or maybe I just haven't checked in there. We will. Even once I'm going with that, I'm just saying, uh, I think Scott's really bringing it up a notch as far as your, like, uh, your knowledge base. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I try. Yeah. I don't even think you try. I think it's like your natural thing. <laughs> I know, I know you were a collector of a whole different genre of stuff and you knew things I was blown away by. So I think it's a gift. Maven doesn't know where I'm going with this. That's it. I'm not going anywhere. Maven, you got to know me well enough. I just go down little trails and, and <laughs> you, you can jump off the trail at any time or sometimes there's something kind of fun along the trail. Scott has great memory and recall. Yes, Richie. Yes, he does. Well, and it's probably not as good as it used to be, I'm sure. I mean, I'm 48. I think when I was 20, it was probably a lot better. Whatever. You're still good. Uh, well, Tom R., I've, I just don't velvet Elvis as much. I kind of feel like <laughs> it's been kind of hard on the little guy. And so I, sometimes I just let him go. Well, you got to let me talk every once in a while. You got to get a little Elvis in there. <laughs> Those are some stamps you bought to mail letters or our postcards out with. Yep. I'm, I think I'm about done with those. Uh, those are about over. I've got to catch up with the last few, and then they will be out until we shoot our new Christmas card pictures. Uh, Precision Matters is asking on Instagram. Uh, right now, I'm looking at, we haven't, I haven't talked about it too much yet. Yesterday, our review of the Compass Box, uh, Benny's, the gold standard, uh, we, we released yesterday. This was a limited edition for Benny's. Now, Gold Standard was the original name for Benny's when they opened 70 years ago. Their liquor stores were called the Gold Standard. Uh, with Compass Box, they did this special release, 895 bottles of. And a super Scotch God fan actually arranged for us to get this bottle, as we like to say. Yep. Um, it to me it comes off now. When we, it, admittedly, when when I first opened it, it was pretty stuffy. Uh, it took some air. Within a couple of weeks, though, it really opened up and, and turned for the better. It really it comes off, uh, and I you know it, Compass boxes blends. There's younger whiskeys. There's older whiskeys. To me, this really feels minimum you know 18 years old. I say somewhere in that range. It really comes off a little bit more mature. Well, I like the hint of the eyeless smoke that's in there. Kind of gave me a Beaumont kind of flavor. And uh, we don't know what it is. Did you ever look that up? Uh, well, um, let's see. I just saw it. It's got an Isla whiskey in it. Um, Tom R. posted the breakdown of the bottle makeup on our review in the comments. So, yeah. Mm. I don't remember what it was, though. Uh, Malted in Montreal is asking if I opened up my bottle of the Allardyce. I picked that up in Oklahoma City. We ran down there, met up with Swami. He was passing through on his uh, Route 66 trip through the States. He was on a little scooter. And uh, I found a bottle of the 18-year Allardyce down there. I haven't opened it up because I still have some left in another bottle. Ooh, says it has some hard bag in it. There you go. Hello. <laughs> Maybe it was like 6% or something, wasn't it? Well, and there you go. The, the Lafroig project just asked on, in, on, just asked on Instagram if we found out what the mystery Isla malt was. And the question has been answered by Tom R that it's hard bag. Oh, just, uh, <laughs> Give him a couple extra rings yep. around the block for that one. Okay, you betcha. Right up there by the... That's, cow, <laughs> that's cowbell for you Instagrammers that are watching. We're uh, we're we're double we're getting double teamed tonight, Instagram and YouTube. Wow. Double teamed and pushing it out. That's right. But um, actually, our review we shot last week, it will, I think next Saturday of Delilah's 25th anniversary comes out. So, yeah, we need to... And the Compass Box, the Muse, which we reviewed during, or we, we did a kind of a quick deal of it uh, during the 12 Hours of Boom. We need to get a solo review of that out as well. 
we do. And we've been talking about going back to a uh, Japanese whiskey that we reviewed quite some time ago and re-reviewing that. Which one? Well, that was a Japanese whiskey. I didn't oh. want to fully tease it out. Gotcha. That then I and Scott's tentatively agreed. I want to do a big art bag family shootout. I managed to get a hold of uh, thanks to a, a great fan. Uh, I was able to get a hold of uh, four kind of uh, long time old bottles of art bag, and uh, we got enough to do a big old family shootout with just art bags. And uh, I really want to get to that as well. I, I just think that'd be fun. Well, Backyard Whiskey points out there's 2% Ardbeg, 5% Kalila in the gold mm. standard. Now, the problem is, even sitting here now, I'm not getting it. When we reviewed it, it's, I mean, it, there's just a slight hint of it in there, and it comes in on the yeah, finish. A little waft of smoke. But once you get it, it's there, and then it remains in, in each sip. You, I mean, it's still there. You keep getting it. It's like the gift that keeps on giving. Mm, that's that's uh, Isla whiskeys all the time. <laughs> uh, we will get together. We're supposed to get together in the morning, shoot a couple episodes. Should be another impromptu tomorrow, and we will take a look at this year's Balvany Pete Week against last year's Balvany Pete Week. Right. The 2002 vintage versus the 2003 vintage. We've heard there's more peat in the 2003 or this year's release. Well, it's definitely heavily peated, that's for sure. I'll tell you, and I, uh, well, let me grab it right here. It and while you're doing that, someone asked, I managed to pick up the, uh, I'll say I'm wrong, but the Ardbeg... What is it? Aura Verdes. It's the green deal. And then the Ard Bog, the Perpetuum, which I had tasted but hadn't had. And then I'm going to really blow the 1991, but it's the Arognon Beist. I'm going to, I know that's wrong. And I've shot a review of those as I opened them all up and tried them. Um, and I just got to get that edited and put out kind of as a non blind quick hitter, long hitter. Dustin. Uh, another super chat from Dustin Silvestri he says, taste the crown Royal and then the compass box for Pete. I'll do that. And uh, where'd it go? Oh, precision matters on Instagram is asking about the gold box or the compass box gold standard. It's only available at Benny's in Chicago. Yeah. And yeah, Travis, they were full bottles. I love our bag. I, Clearly missed out on those before our some of them before we were even reviewing whiskey. So when I had a chance to buy them, I did. Uh, probably about noon tomorrow, Santa Cruzin for the impromptu somewhere in that time frame or earlier, Bart. You, I was reading a comment. Say again. Uh, impromptu tomorrow noonish. Yeah, I think that'll be about right. Yeah, we're we're going to be kicking some shows tomorrow, probably noon. Now I was just going to say real quick. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> the uh, this will probably be in a lot of people's top five whiskeys of the year. Ooh, you're speaking. Well, you you know my soul, and even a lot of comments. Now we reviewed this two Saturdays, maybe three Saturdays ago. Both really surprised by this one. Yeah, um, I think you'll you'll be seeing a lot on this. Now this one, um, this it's a fourteen year old. Uh, one week a year, Balvany peats their barley. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Bart wants to make it a month. He wants a month. month of yeah, skip barley. the week. But peat month. supposedly this year's edition has a lot more peat in it than last year. So tomorrow we'll find out. I am and impressed. the 2002 edition was provided to us by another super scotch god, King Anonymous. King Anonymous, he likes his Pete. Uh, Tom R, you've got to pick up a bottle of it. That's all I'm saying. It, it's it, good, R. Get it. You're missing out if you don't. Yep. We I we got the one of the, the this year's and I told my wife if you want to give me a birthday present 
make that it. She did. And I was very happy. Uh, Swami is asking, I did, uh, when we met up, I took him a bottle of Elijah Craig barrel proof, the older bottles, uh, you have to look up. It's by the ABV yours is 68%. So if you look up, uh, the ECB, the Elijah Craig barrel proof and the 68%, you can find out which batch that was and when it was made. You were a good man. You were a good man. Yeah. What do you uh, do? You know, I'd take a little Northern harvest rye, give some Canadian back to the Canadian baby. <laughs> uh, we're like take that back hey, to Canada You'd be like what the hell in in two weeks we're going to be down in austin texas uh, we were invited down by the whiskey tribe the whiskey vault right their distillery opening august 24th or 25th it's a friday saturday we still it looks like i double booked us uh and we i probably need to cancel that one event don't i uh, I'm not sure. Well, the, we were invited to dinner with Daniel and Rex Friday night. Right. And you had looked at another Facebook event that was going on as well that night. So, right. El Chipo malted in Montreal. <laughs> hey, you never know. It's, it's been in the States. It's flavored it up a little bit. I love the Northern. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I do. Uh, I think I just have one bottle of B518, Matt. He's asking. I give him a manga shirt. Let him ride that bad boy home. Well, and someone pointed out earlier that Insta, because I've got Instagram going over here on our phone. We're live there as well. That Instagram is ahead of YouTube, and YouTube does. There's like a buffer with YouTube, like a 15 second, 10 to 15 second buffer with YouTube, just in case uh, we curse. Yeah, <laughs> they could they could bring us down. Mm. Let me go do just a little bit of the Crown Royal, and I'll go back to the Benny. The gold standard. See if I can get the Pete. Yes, do the it, it's really there's it's so little it's in there. I'm still not getting it. I haven't gotten it yet on the gold standard. I did when we reviewed it. Right. Let me do a little bit of the Crown Royal Bourbon Mash and Westlands Gariana. You know I have it. And Tom R is asking the Pete week. We have both now. The one re we reviewed a couple of weeks ago is the new edition, the 2003 vintage. Uh, King Anonymous, a super scotch god, arranged for us to get a 2002 vintage from last year, and we'll compare those. Yeah, see if they switched up. Because we had had the 17-year-old peated Balvany, and it was so subtle. Mm. Uh, it was still very good, but uh, it was that deal where I was expecting – more of the, the peat punch, exactly what you get from peat week. And it was way more subtle. It was balvany with a bit of peat. And when I went in to taste this latest peat week that we just did, I thought it would be the same thing. And uh, maybe a little bit punched up just because it was a little younger. Oh, no, it was phenomenal. The gold standard next to it, still no peat yet. But the richness of the gold standard next to the, the bourbon mash is... It's, it's just picking up the bourbon mash and he's slamming it around a little bit. Amy W. Amy W. Was, uh, had to go visit her folks, her parents, for a week or two. And they don't have Wi-Fi. They don't have the future. They don't have the future. <laughs> <laughs> right. And Shimon, you are correct. The 17 year ear is way more subtle. It's very, very subtle. What you would expect. I mean, the longer uh, peated whiskey's in, you know, aged in the barrel, the more subtle that peat flavor gets. Um, I think what surprised me is I thought the 14 would be just a little bit more than the 17, and it was a lot more. So. Well, we had done the, it's, well, the thing is with the, the seven, the, and that's an old discontinued bottling, the Balvenie 17 year peated cask. Yeah. And I've got it up there as well, but it's, it's just Balvenie that's been finished in a peated cask, a, a cask that used to have a peated whiskey in it. Right. And it really only picks up a hint of the peat. It's, it's 90% Balvenie, 10% peat. That's a good point. That's a good point. Which is what threw me when we then did the Glen Livet Nadura peated cast, same thing. And I was thinking gimmick. And uh, 
And then that one blew me away. That's that's a special bottle. It's a little bit different, but it's special. We just lost our Instagram feed. It must have ran out of time. I'm probably an hour, so I'm going to start another one here. All right. Uh, she'll uh, shakes head, Bart, peated cast versus whiskey that says heavily peated whiskey. Hmm. But actually, that only took about 20% of my battery on this. For, uh, I was at 40%. I've been live for an hour, and I was down to 23%. It's so only 17% of my battery life. Um, oh, yeah, that's uh, Richie Z's got one of the 17-year Madeira Woods. I think that was a travel retail exclusive. I know Sam Spears had, had social media pictures of, of some of it that he had. It looked awesome. All right, Tom R is thanking uh, me and Swami for opening him up to some Kilhoman, um, the the cast strength, and then uh, uh, Swami opened him up on the PX. Uh, we're back on Instagram. We was over here that uh, my hour time limit hit and we shut down, so I just started a new one for those over here. We got a few people that are watching over here that are also watching on YouTube and commenting. So. Now, Brian Schultz says, I had to throw Pete out of my glass. <laughs> well, you can throw it straight into my mouth is what I'm I love it. Uh, it took me a long time to warm up. to. Oh, not a long time compared to some people probably, but. It took me some time too. It was the compass box Pete monster that changed everything for me in regards to Pete. And I'm trying to remember the one that uh, it's going to come to me. Uh, the Connemara Irish Pete is what changed uh, Scott, I believe. <laughs> Definitely not that one. I think if you tried it again, you might like it. Wow. Yeah, that one is memorable. You, you didn't enjoy that one at all, I know. What was the one? It was the, uh, shoot, what was it? Yeah, it was just a Connemara Irish Peated Whiskey. Yeah, that was the one you didn't like. I was trying to think of the one that won you over, though, and it wasn't it the well. It, it was you know, the I when we, did, when we did Lafroy eighteen. Even in the review, I was, still wasn't into Pete, but I said I could tell this was a good whiskey. It, it was, still wasn't hitting my palate. But then it was that old dusty Brook Lottie three D three, right? Yep, yep. That was well, and I was into it by then. I was already starting to to dig it a little bit. But when I sat down with that one at night, <laughs> I was here. You'd given me the bottle. Right. And as soon as I took a sip of it, I was like, okay, this is what Pete is about. Yes. I don't know what it was with it, but there was just something with it. Maybe it was my taste buds that night. But sure. Look at Andrew. Andrew's got a real good memory. He's like you. He said burnt hair when you were saying the Connemara. <laughs> yeah, burnt. Well, yeah, there might have been some burnt hair. What was the one. burnt hair? It was burnt the plastic. Swedish. No, it was the Swedish one that you said it was Gouda wrapped in plastic thrown in a fire. Yeah, that was the uh, Swedish one. But yeah, the burnt hair was the Connemara. Good job, Andrew. Well, Beamer 72 Addiction says, thanks for all the advice. You guys are spot on when it comes to taste on the palate. Mm, thank thank you. you. Appreciate it. Yep. And Scott's going to be our his bottle historian as well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Richie Z oh, wants to know about an Irish shootout. That could be done. Ooh, God, I would love that. Andrew says he can't forget the taste, so he got that same note. Now, Don's on. Don Sutcliffe says, got to go. Good to see you guys. Well, thanks, Don. We hadn't seen you in a while. If you're in Wichita again, let us know. We will go to any tasting or just hang out with you. Yeah, well, let's talk about it. How about if he's here October 19th or 20th? Ooh, come to that. Yeah, if he hadn't left yet, talk about it. Uh, that is our five-year anniversary slash, slash birthday gathering here in Wichita, Kansas. There's details up at scotchtestdummies.com on the events tab. But Friday night, we are having a steak dinner at a steakhouse here in town with a Scotch Malt Whiskey Society tasting. Uh, tickets are for sale for that. Now, there will be some hangouts. Uh, we have some rooms set aside or, or blocked at a uh, the downtown Drury Inn. Mm -hmm. uh, the, we'll be hanging out there in the meantime or some of the extra time and stuff as well. Uh, Saturday through the daytime, we'll be there. Saturday evening turns into another ticketed event for a dinner 
and uh, some whiskey sampling and some live music at a place called All Things Barbecue, which yeah. is a couple blocks from the hotel. I like to say walking distance. Bart Ooh. likes to say Uber distance. Right. Well, it's not Uber distance. It's it's four blocks over a bridge. And uh, what's nice is they're going to have a chef that works with smoked meats. And uh, so we're going to have some, that'll be the food that's served. We're going to do a live show there as well. So we'll have some chairs set up. We'll probably have some impromptu guests slide in. Cousin Shane, Shakes Pennington will be there working acoustic guitar and a little bit of uh, Shane's uh, beautiful voice. And uh, should just be a blast. So. <laughs> a couple people got my uh, walking distance and your Uber distance. They're making fun of you being lazy on there. Um <laughs> Arana 2414 on Instagram says, have you guys ever thought about doing a distillery shootout doing the whole line? We've done that with Lafroig. We're going to do it with Ardbeg coming up. Right. So Lafroig was as much of the line half ago, good. two years ago. Bart was really into Pete. I wasn't as much. There was about a throat punch that happened during that episode. Yeah, I got super excited and he didn't like it. <laughs> By the way, uh, DeShilv2 says everything is uber distance. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and then uh, tonight's poison is, uh, he says, pardon my ignorance on this, but how do you guys know each other and how did you guys get started? We Good met, question, actually. We met in 1995. Right. So 20, what, 23 years ago. Yep. Yeah. At work. So work. we're in the witness protection program right now. We can't talk about that too much of what we do yet yet <laughs> wait, wait wait till we get to uncork that bottle but uh so we've worked together <laughs> so and <laughs> Bart and i used to sit around the office and we'd have all these other co-workers that would just come sit and they'd just listen to us banner and just right. talk about nothing nothing right uber distance and we, we were like, look at all these. Well, and we were just starting to get into whiskey ourselves, but yeah, we were kind of like, you know, all these guys come around, they sit and listen to us <laughs> talk about nothing. Look at Swami. First of all, Vermont's beautiful this time of year. Now, yeah. Bruno had to go look. Yeah. <laughs> I knew if I said but, that, you'd have to go look at the comment. Yeah. Like, Hold on. What is that? But, uh, so anyway, yeah, we said, why don't we take this onto YouTube with uh, some whiskey shows? You'd been doing, I hate, I hate to say it, Bart yeah, had been doing board game reviews on YouTube. Zip. So he said, let's do whiskey reviews. So right. I said, let's do it. Right, because here was the deal. How could we fail? You and I hanging out, drinking whiskey, filming it, done. That's a, that's a success. If I, I told them from the get-go, if 17 people watch, win. Bam. And we got 17 pretty quick. So I was like, yeah. everything here is downhill. I mean, we're hanging out. Uh, we're buddies. We're drinking whiskey. Can't get any better. And our whole deal was the way we chat, carry on, we draw coworkers or passerby, or when we're at a restaurant, we'll draw people to the table. I mean, there'll be people come over. And so I said, you know, if we take this on, on the on the on the interwebs, I think we'll bring people together, and boom. So, I mean, I said we've got 23 years of doing this. Surely it'll translate through YouTube, and it did, and it does. So, uh, Beamer72 is asking on Instagram, do you guys ever get asked to do publicity events? We, uh, nothing. Nothing yet, really. Star Wars. We, we, I mean, we're pretty happy going the course that we're going right now. We've got about minimum a year and a half to two years before we're eligible to retire. Two years for me. Min, that's, that's minimum. Right. I would, it would be real hard because we'd be leaving some money on the table. Yeah. We're probably, I mean, we're pretty happy uh, at the pace we're going, doing Here's YouTube reviews, doing live streams. I, th I think, you know, we're going down to Austin here towards the end of August. Um, actually, we got asked up to Kansas City for a tasting coming up in September. That's true. 
So, you know, I think probably some more of those requests will probably come in and we'll be able to venture out a little bit further, maybe. Yeah. Gradually. Now, here's, if we got invited to some other uh, openings or a brand new distillery, uh, we would love to go to those as well. And our, we've even bought some camera equipment um, that will allow us to shoot some stuff on site and good mics and stuff. Now, Shimon and some other people brought up Star Wars. Scott and I love Star Wars. Matter of fact, the first time I met him, we sat down, let's just say, in our office together. And he said, first of all, I like Star Wars, and I don't mean a little bit. I like it a lot. And I'm a Denver Bronco fan, and we're in Kansas territory. He didn't know that I moved here from Denver and huge Star Wars fan. So right off the bat. We were, we were, and he goes, and I like cigars. I'm like, done. Nope. Uh uh. Nope. So, and then Shimon asks, uh, by the way, what happened to the FET movies? I heard the FET movies and the Obi Wan standalone are dead because Solo tanked. So, well, a, that's a perspective there. Well, there's a rebellion going on currently. So. Uh, real quick on Instagram, KCL is asking what we're doing in Austin. We'll be down there the 24th and the 25th with the Whiskey Tribe at the Whiskey Vault. Uh, they invited us down to the opening of their distillery. So now, matter of perspective on Solo, it only made $500 million, you know, on the opening weekend. Right, but it cost them eight hundred and seventy when they were all done with the reshoots and the uh, the re. Uh, oh yeah, it's, it's still a money maker. It just didn't make a billion like the other movies have done when it opened up. Well, if you go look, they were hoping to make six hundred million in the uh, in the uh, U.S. Open, and they got half that. So that's their problem. But. They immediately uh, slowed down the other uh, anthology standalones. Hey, Water of Life Film joined us on Instagram. Uh, check out, we did a live stream with them a couple weekends ago, uh, talking about the Water of Life Film uh, documentary they're making, looking for the uh, perfect whiskey, or the basically a, a, the, how the distilleries or the distillers are in search of the perfect whiskey. Now, I actually like Solo. I didn't think it sucked. I thought That's the... Yeah. I thought the first act was rough, and you can kind of see where Ron Howard stepped in and then started to tweak it and almost um, really carried it. It still had a rough first act, but uh, I wouldn't say greedy. Their special effects just go into the millions and millions of dollars on those movies. Yeah. Well, and if they don't make their – if they don't come out uh, in the black, they won't do them again. So <laughs> – Swami says he just liked Darth Maul. Well, who would? That guy was pure evil. Uh, we have not got the Glenfiddich Fire and Cane yet. It hasn't even showed up in our area. I'm still waiting for McAllen Edition 4 to show up here. I got to pick that bad boy up. <laughs> I like the way you said it. The McAllen Edition 4. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. yeah. Well, for the 4. Sounded like you were right out of Canada. The sniper hasn't seen it yet. No spoilers. A sniper, if you haven't seen it yet, you should be spoiled just for not seeing it. Yeah, by now, exactly. My goodness, you can't call spoilers at this point. <laughs> hey, Scott, you remember that one time when he did the thing? You know, though, right there. Oh, I couldn't believe that happened. That was unbelievable. You wouldn't think Solo would do that. I will say the actor, who I don't know his name, nobody's going to beat Harrison Ford, but he did a good job. I definitely felt like it was Han Solo. So... Uh, the actor definitely was not the problem at all. Uh, Richie Z, I, our, our store never did, was able to get that bottle of the 13-year Scallywag. But, um, I mean, I'm not I'm not necessarily hunting it out, hunting for it. Uh, there's just there's too much out there, too much on the radar, and I've got enough money going out right now. Oh, and Donner Pass, you were spot on. The, the whole reason nobody went to see Solo, or a lot of people didn't, is because The Last Jedi was terrible. So anytime you've got Luke Skywalker having to get green or blue milk right from the teat, oh, my goodness, that movie's in trouble. I didn't mind it. I didn't think it was that bad. Heck, my kids don't even understand that milk comes from the teat of a cow. Try explaining what Luke was doing. 
I got confusing, dude. I'm not going to even comment <laughs> on the parenting style dude, if they don't understand the milk comes from a cow. Come on, man. These new kids, they don't get it. If I told my boys that the cow, the milk comes from a cow, they just think it's like white colored water, boy. That's it. <laughs> if, if they saw the process, they would opt out. They would <laughs> opt out. I'm just saying. I think it is about time for Solo to come out on uh, at least iTunes anyway. I'll get Solo. I, I refuse to get Last Jedi. I was so, I would have walked out of that movie if I wasn't with my family. Just because it wasn't written in the way you thought it should go. No, it was terrible. I thought it was pretty good. Oh, God almighty. <laughs> How about how about just if you're the commander of a vessel, you just let people know what your plan are. They're all on the ship. Well, there was some okay, that doesn't ruin the movie though. Oh, it's the whole plot mode. Then how about the trip to the right. Vegas planet? Oh my god. And then and then it, the, the whole thing fails, but well, we freed some animals. What? What are you talking about? I mean, it was it was I like Benicio del Toro. I thought he did a pretty good job as that guy. Well, he's a great actor. Yeah. But the whole point is they're supposed to go find a guy with what what was he wearing? A special lapel pin or something? Yeah. He's the only one that can hack the whatever the thing in the thing. But then they get thrown in jail, and guess what? There's some guy in jail that can hack it too. What? Come on. Give me a break. It's terrible. Oh, uh, yeah, I should. Uh, Wes Jolly's asking about uh, this. That's cool. This is actually uh, Whiskey Anorak is her name on Instagram. She does her own uh, artist or art drawings, basically, of uh, different whiskeys. She'd done this one of Compass Box. I'll show that on Instagram as well. A lot of you guys tuning in might know Whiskey Anorak. <laughs> but uh, this came from a Super Scotch God fan as well, sent this to me. I'll go even further, Eric. Uh, chicken doesn't come in a bucket. It comes in a nugget. <laughs> <laughs> the bucket would be offensive to my son but he would take the box of prefab nugget so and a, and a meat comes from a clown oh sniper i missed the last part of that that makes it just precious <laughs> oh all right i'll be quiet now i'll be quiet all right, well, let's wrap it up. We talked about October. Go check out scotchtestdummies.com uh, under the events tab for October 19th and 20th, our fifth year anniversary birthday gathering. Come come join us, even if it's for Friday night or Saturday night or both. Yeah, that'll be fun. We can talk Star Wars. Uh, August 24th, 25th, we'll be down in Austin, Texas, down at the uh, Crowded Barrel uh, Distillery opening. And watch for more information on the whiskey advent calendar for this year. We'll be doing a little helping Jonathan out over at Secret Spirits with a little push for that. Mm -hmm. It will be available in the States this year for the first time. Whoa. Most of the States. See, whiskey comes in a bottle. That's true enough. It comes in a little advent bottle. All right, Bart. Um... Grammy Young says, thanks, guys. Busy stream. Oh, yeah, you should see. These guys sometimes get such a chat going, they get, they get like, put on hold from YouTube. <laughs> they think they're bots. <laughs> What's the warning you get again, Scott? You were chatting once so fast that it locked you out for a yeah, while. Just, yeah, you, you gotta, if you do too many uh, chat messages in a certain amount of time, it thinks you're a bot, so it shuts you down for a couple yeah. minutes. I love that. We had like a hundred and some in folks in once and they were chatting up a, a fiendish pace and they all started getting warned that they were bots. I was like, you are killing the YouTube, man. We're killing them. I think you guys are bots. <laughs> love it. I just saw Sean Hardesty Hellcats over on Instagram. I think he just tuned in. We're about ready to shut her down though. Oh, um, Hellcats. What, what's his reference to Hellcats? It's a hell of a fighter in World War II, Pacific feeder. Uh, he, uh, I don't know. Or, or is he a fan of like cats and they're mean? 
he likes both. <laughs> that was a good look in the camera, the way you paused and looked right in. It was like you're in my soul. Uh, Tom Marr says we need a pay we, it is about time for uh, it's definitely time for a Patreon live stream. We do yeah. need to do that. Yeah. We need to do or, that. We, we picked that around a little bit even and decided to go uh live with this one. So we we need to do a a Patreon only live. True. Dodge Trin Hellcat. Ooh, yeah, that's a good one too. Trini and C and Lori in Seattle also both just tuned in. Some neighbor, or was it you that was telling me you, there's a Dodge Hellcat, and then there's one that's even more of a beast than the Hellcat. It's called like the evil cat from hell or something. I don't know. <laughs> Seriously, there's like one level higher than the Hellcat. I was like, shut up. And he's like, no, really? Huh. There's some guy down my block here that has like eight race cars in his garage. Mm. All right. Let's shut her down, Bart. I think we're at right. a time limit. Sounds good to me. Scotch it. You scotch gods. Cilantro. Dummies. Still alive. Still alive. Going we got to figure out.